I remember walking out of Walmart with a cart full of gardening supplies a few years back. My mom had sprained her wrist and needed stuff picked up for the start of spring, so it was down to me to go grab some stuff for her. I'm loading the stuff into the trunk of my car when I happen to notice someone walking past me out of the corner of my eye. Kind of took me off by surprise, so I turned around out of instinct and ended up making eye contact with this younger looking guy. He looked like 20 something, workout gear, shaved head, totally normal looking guy who looked like he'd been out for a run or something. I didn't want to seem all confrontational or whatever, so I smiled and said, hey, and just carried on loading all the stuff into my trunk. Next thing I hear is someone saying, was it you? I turn again, and it's the same guy, smiling back at me, having asked me that question. I'm like, was what me? And the guy responds like, you know. I sort of chuckle, thinking it was an honest mistake on the guy's part, thinking I was just someone else or whatever, so I tell him I don't know what he's talking about, then just carry on loading the stuff into my trunk. That's when I hear him walking towards me from his footsteps, so I turn around, hoping things aren't about to get confrontational. But those hopes were totally dashed when I saw the look on his face. He looked livid. And as I'm getting ready for the unfortunate event of having to fight a total stranger for no reason, the guy starts screaming at me. Don't pretend you don't know. You got me transferred. It's because of you I got transferred. He said a bunch of other stuff that might have you censoring this post, so I won't repeat it, but trust me when I say it was language that would have made a stevedore blush. I remember one of the scariest things being how he was still sort of smiling as he started shouting about being transferred, and then as he carried on screaming at me, he went bright red in the face, got this look about him like he was about to murder me, and he actually started spitting as he was screaming due to how out of control he was getting. I'm telling him to calm down that there's been some kind of mistake, and that's all without even asking what he meant by got me transferred. But then every time I try to reason with the guy, he almost takes it like I'm trying to gaslight him or whatever and it just makes him angrier. I don't even know how he managed to conceal it on him, but he pulled out this extendable baton from somewhere and whips it open right in front of me before charging at me. I just reacted, running around my car and screaming for other people in the parking lot to call 911. That was the other scary thing, how most people just stood and watched with their mouths open instead of either calling someone or actually getting involved to help. Then the other really scary thing, the guy screams as he chased me, they went from actual words to just this wild psycho babble, just stuff that barely made sense and only had an actual understandable word every three or four screams. He was completely manic, and it really didn't hit me at the time, but I later found out that he was suffering from a complete mental break. He was way faster than me too, so if it wasn't for me being able to duck and dodge around parked cars, he would have caught up with me in seconds. And then because I didn't have anything to defend myself with, just bags of compost and seeds and whatnot, he might have actually been able to bash my head in and there's not a thing I've been able to do about it too. Eventually, some hero of a security guard from a movie theater of all places, he actually ran over and tried tackling the guy chasing me but this psycho kid swung at him a few times with his baton and then the guy was forced to back off and try to tackle him when he had his back turned, which obviously wasn't easy because the kid was in this, like, super saiyan manic state. Every time he got close, the kid just clocked him, turned, and started swinging, but then that gave me a window to put some more distance between us. The guy might have actually saved my life in that way. Anyway... The cops showed up after what seemed like way too long, but when they tried tasing the guy, it just had absolutely no effect on him. That was the other thing that scared me. I've actually seen a guy getting tased before, it's a long story, and when the wire things hit him, he just seized up and hit the floor like a statue. But this guy, it just had zero effect on him. Maybe it was a broken taser or whatever, but it was still pretty terrifying to see. The cops wouldn't go into too much detail with me, but the kid was known to him as suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, and I went from hating the kid to actually feeling really sorry for him incredibly fast. 
They'd been getting calls about him for the past two days, but he kept on running from the scenes of the calls and getting away before they could actually take him into custody. I don't feel any ill will towards him, and I hope he got the help that he needed. But I'm not kidding when I say he legit could have killed me that day. Easily the scariest thing that's ever happened to me at Walmart. Last January, I was working as an associate at the Walmart over in Lake Charles. I was working second shift, so that's 1pm to 10pm, and it was about 7pm when people started to notice some kind of drama going off in the parking lot. The greeter noticed it first, and was actually getting ready to have someone call the cops, but the whole thing seemed to die down, and then, from what I heard, things sort of just chilled out. I asked a coworker if anything juicy had happened, and she said no, but that the drama was between two groups of teenage girls and that one of the groups had walked into the store. They weren't being loud or obnoxious or anything, not at first anyway. They were just walking up and down the aisles talking among themselves, and one of the girls seemed to be making a video of them just hanging out. I remember hearing one of the girls saying something like, Man, I need my taser back but I just put that down to them talking smack after almost getting into a fight or something. The other thing I know is that loss prevention was watching them after one of them seemed to take something out of the kitchen utensils section, but they were just keeping their distance and observing until they tried to make an exit for the store. This is actually super relevant to what happened later on too, so keep it in mind. Anyways, I went back to what I was doing, then the next thing I know... There's all kinds of screaming coming from near the front section of the store. I walked around to see what was going on and that's when I see a group of girls in the doorway shouting at the group that was inside. They were all saying all this stuff like, where y'all at? Come out. They knew the other group had walked inside the Walmart and were obviously trying to find them. The greeter was trying to get them to calm down or leave, saying they could either stop making a scene or was going to call the cops but neither group was paying him any mind. Then, one of the girls in the doorway group starts saying something threatening, and the other is all like, I'm about to come out as soon as my sister gets here. But the other girl didn't want to wait for that. She just walks inside the store and marches straight over to this girl with dyed blonde hair. I'm like, ah snap, this is about to go off right here. And honestly, just like that, the two girls start throwing hands at one another in that typical girl fight way, just flailing their hands at one another. Then the girl with blonde hair, she reaches for something in her pants, and although I didn't see it clearly, she swings at the other girl's chest, and it looks a lot like she just punched her. But then as soon as the hit connected, the blonde girl like backed up, then ran off while the other girl just sort of staggered back, then looked down at her chest. I didn't see the blood, not right away, I just heard the screams. What I did see was the girl who had been hit stagger a few steps then just collapse on the floor. Then when her friends dropped down and rolled her over, that's when I saw the blood on the floor. The EMTs were called, the girl was taken away in an ambulance, and we were all basically tasked with comforting the girl's friends as they were absolutely all shooken up that they just watched their girl get stabbed. Then, about 9pm, because we had to empty the store out so the cops could do their thing, I was told I could finish early so I could go home and basically and try and get the whole thing out of my head. But then, like a half hour after I walked through the front door of my parents' place, I get an Instagram DM from one of the younger co-workers that I was tight with. They asked something like, You were working second shift tonight, right? And I respond, Yeah, some messed up stuff happened. Then the next thing they send me is this long link that had Facebook in there somewhere. I figured it'd just be a sharing of a news story about the whole stabbing thing, but when I opened up the link, it opens up one of those Facebook Live videos and instantly I knew what I was watching. I knew what I was watching because, one, I recognized one of the girls from the stabbing at work, and two, they're saying things like, that was too much and if she killed her, she killed her, and then like shrugging it off as if though it was her fault for coming at them and her friend was just defending herself. And then it got way worse. 
They were literally bragging how they killed someone, and they knew they killed someone too. I mean, I just thought the girl would be taken to the ER or something, but they knew she'd stabbed her in the heart because she aimed to stab her in the heart. We didn't find out until the next day that the girl who got stabbed had died on the way to the hospital. The most effed up thing though, none of those girls looked older than my little sister, who was a high school freshman at the time. Some of them barely looked like they'd gone through puberty yet. I mean, these were literally kids, literally effing children, and they just killed somebody and were proud of it. I think maybe it was just that they were trying to hide how scared they were, or trying to establish the whole self-defense thing before the cops came looking for them. But my god, seeing that kind of savagery coming out of the kid made my heart break for humanity a little. Those girls had ruined their lives with one little fight, and even worse, they literally ended another girl's. Taking her away from her family, friends, all she had going for her in life, all because of one stupid fight. I used to work the late shift at a Walmart here in Jacksonville and every night after finishing at like one in the morning, I'd walk to the exact same bus stop to call an Uber. Now, this whole story would never have happened if my dumb self didn't just get picked up from work, but I always like having a smoke as soon as I finished and it wasn't the kind of thing that management would have taken kindly to me smoking right outside of the Walmart. It was the arrested and fired kind of smoke, so... I used to walk to the bus stop. Anyway, this one night I'm sitting there, smoking away and the Uber is maybe only three or four minutes away. Seconds later, when I see this dude in the distance walking towards the bus stop, I immediately started getting bad vibes. Getting bad vibes from people when I was smoking up was hardly anything out of the ordinary, but I still figured that I'd keep an eye on him as he walked past, just in case he tried anything funny. He walks past me, but only by a few feet, and then he stops and leans against the bus stand like he's waiting for the bus with me. Now, I know well that there's no bus coming, so why is he just standing like there like he's waiting for one? That's when the bad vibes about the guy seriously intensified because he was definitely acting weird. The only question was if they had any bad intentions for me. I'm getting more and more nervous watching the little blip on my phone screen getting closer and closer and as much as I'm trying not to make eye contact with the guy, I can see him looking over at me every so often, like he's sizing me up or something. I'm feeling pretty thankful by the time my Uber rounds a corner and I start to see its headlights, but as it pulls up, I actually think that maybe my paranoia might be starting to get the better of me. And maybe it's just me being the judgmental one instead of the guy actually posing any kind of threat. Then literally, as I open the door to the Uber, the guy says, You lucky kid. I look back, and he has this grin on his face that literally made my skin crawl. That's when I realize he did actually have something in mind for me. I don't know what it was, whether or not he planned on robbing me or just beating me up or whatever it was. I just know it wasn't good, and I thank Christ that my Uber showed up when it did. This occurred several years ago. I used to shop at Walmarts quite frequently. They really sold everything I needed and were all over the place, so it was always my first door to go to. At one point, I had to go out of town for a work conference. It lasted about a week and was about a 10 hour drive away. After it was over, I was driving back. I was on the way home about halfway and it got pretty late at night. I was prepared to drive through the night, but my car got low on gas, so I stopped at the next exit and filled it up. I was pretty hungry, but noticed that the convenience store of the gas station was closed. This town was really small and didn't seem to have much but they did have a Walmart that was across the street. This Walmart was one of the strangest ones I had ever seen. It just wasn't the typical kind of Walmart building that they usually are in. The building seemed smaller, and more as if it had taken over a building of a previous store that had been there. The parking lot was quiet, only a couple of cars, so I looked it up on Google Maps 
and it said sure enough it was open. This seemed kind of surprising to me because it was around midnight, but I pulled my car into the parking lot and went inside. As I slowly walked in, I didn't really know what I was looking for, but I guess just some type of food. As I walked around inside, I didn't notice anybody else. The inside of the Walmart looked for the most part like a regular Walmart, but at the same time, a lot different. It was much smaller inside and arranged differently than most of the ones I had been in. Still, not a big deal though, and I tried to find something I could snack on. As I walked around, I didn't see anybody else in the store at all. It seemed a little bit odd to not even see a worker, but then again, it was midnight in a small town that I had never been in before. I had made it to the back aisle and was looking around when I heard the noise of someone walking. They entered the aisle from the far side from where I was in, and I noticed it was someone wearing one of those horse face masks that covers a person's whole head. I looked and it startled me at first, but then I chuckled. I guess it was some guy pranking people late at night. He stood there looking at me. Then he walked away. I told him it was very funny. I finally found a couple of things and picked them up. Then I headed to the front of the store. As I did, I noticed another person walking by, also wearing a horse mask. I thought maybe it had to be the guy's friend and they were both in on the joke. I once again smiled and kept walking. I used the self-checkout and paid for my things, all while not seeing a single employee. As I was almost done, I saw another two people emerge from behind one of the check lanes. They were both wearing horse masks as well. By that time, I got a rush of fear run through my body. I didn't know what was going on, but it didn't really seem like a joke to me anymore. I looked back and saw the other two people in horse masks staring at me from the back near the aisles. I tried to not let them see the fear that I had. I calmly got my receipt and walked away and out the doors. I walked all the way back to my car hoping that I wouldn't hear the footsteps of anyone leaving behind me, and to my surprise I didn't. But when I got to my car, I realized there was a new car that was parked next to mine. I tried to ignore it as best as I could, and got to my car, unlocked it, and quickly got inside. As I did, I glanced over to the car parked next to mine. At first, it looked like it was empty, but then I saw a horse mask pop up in the driver's seat. I just about had a heart attack in that moment. I slammed my foot on the gas and left that city back to the freeway and on my way home. I got home the next day and still wonder what was going on there. Last summer, I worked at a Walmart, mostly stocking shelves late at night. It was pretty easy and was really the first real job that I had. One night, I happened to be working at around 11 o'clock p.m. We were still open at that time, but we would rarely get many customers then because we closed at midnight. I was in an aisle where we sold pet supplies at the very back end of the store, just stocking a shelf. I heard somebody walking close by and then saw a man enter the aisle and start to approach me. I really didn't like when customers would ask me questions, but I would always do my best to answer them. He came closer to me, and when he did, I noticed that some of his clothes were ripped, and he seemed a little bit off. He said to me that he had a question for me. Then he began to ask something, but never really got to the question. He stopped himself and slowly said to me that he didn't like me. His face changed to an angry look. I had no idea what to do, but I figured this man had to be on some sort of drugs. He slowly walked behind the aisle we were in. I just shook my head and went back to work, but I could tell that the man was just standing there barely around the corner. As I took products out of boxes and placed them on the shelves, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, the man stick his head around the corner for a second and then go back. He still had a very angry look on his face. I did my best to ignore him and figured that he would walk away soon enough. About five minutes passed by, and as far as I knew, he was still there. Then out of nowhere, several items came flying off the shelf near me as if they had been pushed from the other side. Now this annoyed me. I said in a firm voice to the man that he should just get whatever he came here to get and leave. What he said in response was that he was going to get me, and then he called for me to come around the corner to the other side. I ignored it and started to pick up the items that fell. He called out a couple of more times for me to come out, 
but I just ignored him once again. About a minute later, I heard the sound of more people in the aisle next to mine. It sounded like four or five men were suddenly in the aisle. I decided to walk over and look, and saw several police officers start to take the man away. One of the officers walked over to me, and I asked him what happened. He told me that that man had assaulted somebody in a nearby restaurant a few blocks away, in a seemingly random attack, and then fled. He was found at the Walmart. It seemed like he was going for me next. I had a job a few years ago that was pretty tough. I worked some insanely long days and got home very late at night sometimes. One night I was working late and I left work so sleepy that I could barely stay awake. I began driving home and after about 10 minutes I knew I wouldn't make it all the way back before falling asleep. I pulled into the next exit where there was a 24 hour Walmart that I knew of. It was sometime after two in the morning when I got there. My goal was to just walk around a little bit to wake up and maybe buy an energy drink or something with caffeine in it. I got inside the store and began to walk around. I only saw a few customers at the front end of the store with some employees, but other than that it seemed almost completely empty. I was walking around the back end of the store for a little bit, slowly starting to feel more awake, when I noticed someone walking behind me. They were walking behind me at an extremely close distance that was very uncomfortable. I stopped and looked behind me. There was a man that was no more than five feet away. He stopped as well and stared at me with a blank look on his face for a second. He was about six feet tall wearing a brown suit jacket with a brown turtleneck. He then turned and walked away into a nearby aisle. I continued to walk around the store, but it wasn't long until the man was back again. This time, as soon as he got close, I turned to him and said, can I help you? He once again just changed directions and walked away. I decided it would be best for me to just leave at that point. I went and got an energy drink and checked out. I was feeling more awake now though and also a little bit creeped out by the man. I left the store and walked back to my car. Something about the way the man was staring at me just kind of gave me the creeps. Luckily for me I was way more awake now and I was able to drive home without any problems. If that were the full story, it would be bad enough, but sadly it's not. I drove home, and of course when I got there, I fell asleep immediately. But I woke up about an hour or two later to the sound of a truck engine running very loudly. I looked out of my bedroom window to the street. I saw a truck sitting on the street in front of my window. In the front seat was the same man staring at me. He still had that blank look on his face. Almost right away after I looked at him. He screeched his tires and sped away. I've never been able to figure out who this man was or what he wanted from me, but I never did see him again. Anyone who's ever worked a night shift job will tell you that it eventually gets old. I remember being really excited about starting my first night shift job. I thought it would be so cool, like that episode of Spongebob with the hash slinging slasher or something. It was nothing like that at all. In fact, it got plain old repetitive after a while. I'm a male nurse and I had been working in a hospital nearby. It was a long commute and extremely unbearable. Once I finished my contract with the hospital, which was about a year, I decided to apply for another job, one that was a little less stressful and disorganized than the hospital. I got a job at a child psychiatric unit. Working with children with mental illnesses seemed like a cool job. Maybe cool isn't the right word, but meaningful. The hospital left me with this feeling of trying to save people who were going to die anyway. But with these kids, I could make a real difference that might turn their life around or find a way to let them cope with whatever is wrong with them. I was all around excited about it. The pay was even higher, which had me really excited too. The only problem was that the only shift available was the night shift. The hiring manager told me that there might be a day shift position available within a couple of months and I would be the first one to get consideration if it opened, but that was about it. So there I was helping kids, at night. The only issue with that is, is that they were all asleep for the most part. The only time I got to do anything was when one of them woke up or started misbehaving. 
This very quickly became the most boring job I had ever worked in my life. About a month went by, and something moderately frightening finally happened. It was a night like any other. I was sitting at my desk charting some stuff I had done with other kids earlier that night. I had heard a noise that I did not quite recognize at first. It sounded like some of the kids were wrestling or something, but on the bed, I got anxious. As I did not want to go in there and see mentally handicapped kids doing, um, you know. Call me cynical, but that's where my mind went immediately. But when I got in there, I saw something that I don't think I can ever unsee. I turned the light on to see one of the older kids who was trying to smother another one. The kid who was doing the smothering had no previous incidents of violent behavior. I didn't personally know these kids well enough because I didn't work during the day, but I knew their cases well enough that the kid doing the smothering had bipolar disorder. It was severe, but he had never had a violent outburst like this. It was just so unusual, but I immediately pulled him off the other kid, and then he started fighting me. He reached around his own head and punched me in the nose at a weird angle. This kid had to have been 11 or 12 years old, and I honestly was surprised at how much force he had behind his punch. He didn't break my nose or anything, but he bloodied it up. My adrenaline kicked in after that, and I was able to restrain him without a problem. I called for a nurse from another unit in the building to come over and help me. I felt like this took forever, but it was probably only just a few minutes. The entire time I was waiting, though, I couldn't help but look at this little kid who had nearly murdered another kid. When the nurse got over, we gave him some medication that would knock him out and sedate him and put him to sleep. I asked the other nurse, Carla, what I was supposed to do. She was there for a few years before me, and I assumed she would have a good answer. We just did everything you can do, kid. Violent outbursts don't get kids thrown out of here very often. I was a little shocked. I argued with her a little, but that was that. I tried talking to the kid that was being smothered, but he didn't really have a whole lot to say about it. He said that he didn't really know the other kid that well, but they never had any negative incidents up until this night. This was a few years back, and I will never forget how I almost watched that kid die. If I had just been there a few minutes later, he could have been dead right now. It wasn't long after that experience that I started looking for another job. I got one a few weeks later and I did my best to explain the situation to my case manager. She didn't seem to understand or care, and that's not my problem anymore. One day like any other, I was sitting in my room doing whatever when I got a notification from Instagram that I got a new follower. It seemed to be one of those random spam-like accounts. The username was Ty13053, and there were five pictures on the profile, all of different typical suburban houses. The profile had two followers, was following three people including me, and none of the pictures had any likes. Comments seemed to be disabled on all of the pictures. I didn't bother blocking or removing the account from my followers, as I had my profile set to public anyway at the time. A couple nights later, I got a notification that the random Ty13053 account liked my most recent picture. Just being curious, I click on the notification and then pull up the profile again. This time there was a new picture on the profile, and I instantly recognized it as a picture of my house. I DM'd the profile asking who it was, saying it was very funny. Of course, it had to be one of my friends messing with me. When the person running the account left my DMs on scene and didn't reply, I followed up with, this is harassment and a threat, and that I would have the police follow up on this. I ran to my parents' room to wake them up, as it was past 12 at that point. I showed them the picture of our house, and said someone was messing with me who knew where we lived. They tried to rationalize and said the same thing I thought, that it was someone from my school messing with me. My dad and I both went outside regardless to have a look around the property and on the street. It was a ghost town out there though, as it should be past 12 o'clock. We went back inside into our respective bedrooms. I wasn't actually going to pursue it with the police at that exact moment. It was obvious to me, at least in the moment, that someone who knew me was pranking me. I stayed up for a few more hours, and around the time I was about to go to bed, I got a DM from the account. It was an image, another image of my house. It was on the side this time. As I had the chat opened, he sent another, this time a picture of my window, 
with the glare from the TV in my room visible in the picture. I didn't dare get up and look out the window. Wouldn't you guess it, the next DM from the account was, look out your window. I turned off the TV to allow total darkness in the room. I didn't want to be seen by whoever was at my window. I quietly crawled off my bed onto the floor in the dark. As I was crawling on the carpet towards the door, a pounding on the window started. I don't want to say knocking, because these bangs on the glass sounded loud enough to shatter it. Inevitably, I turned, and of course, saw a person at the window. Facial features though, impossible to make out. I got up and ran out of my room and to my parents' room once again. I pulled my dad out of the bed and led him to my room. He heard the end of the bangs on my window, but by the time we got to my room, the guy at the window was gone. The banging was all my dad needed to believe me and take this seriously though. We called the cops that second and talked to the officers who came. They said the good news was since the person was contacting me through Instagram, they could track the person after putting a legal request into Instagram. So that same night, we followed the cop car to the nearest precinct where we went through this long process. They took the account name and my details of the story and literally the next day, we found out who it was. It was this kid named Luke who went to my high school. As much as I want to give the last name, that could lead to issues. Luke was a very, very weird kid that didn't talk to many people. He was just a very mean, unpleasant, and scary dude. Not scary like tough, scary like some would even fear he'd do something crazy that would harm students or staff. I don't know why he targeted me, I never even spoke to the kid, but this really proved how dangerous he was. He hid my window so hard we found small cracks on it in the daylight. He was arrested and we got him for a harassment charge, an attempted breaking and entering charge, and I think a couple others. 